In this video, we look at the different units of data storage that you need to be aware of for the exam. We already understand that everything stored in a computer system is stored in binary, those zeros and ones that represent just two states. For example, capacitors that store a charge or don't store a charge in RAM to represent a one or a zero, magnetic north and south poles in hard drives, pits and lands on Blu-ray discs, current or no current with logic gates. This is because it's much easier and therefore cheaper to manufacture electronic component units with just these two states. However, this means that everything, literally everything, must be stored with only zeros and ones, known as a bit or a binary digit. It is clear that Boolean values true and false or on and off can be stored with just one bit. However, to store more complex types of data, we need to use a combination of bits. For example, a single digit LCD display requires four bits of data. I will explore how and why that is the case in a later video about binary numbers. Those four bits are called a nibble because they're half a byte. And yes, this is because computer scientists somehow think they have a sense of humor. Therefore, a byte is eight bits. Those eight bits can be used to represent lots of different types of data. For example, it could be a number. It could also be a letter or a symbol if every letter had its own binary sequence. Equally, it could be part of a picture or a sound file. This is exactly how computers work, and we'll explore each of these concepts in more detail in other videos in this unit. A single byte, whilst useful for storing a single character, is not enough for other types of data, and therefore computers started using thousands of bytes of data called kilobytes. As the binary system is a base two number system, these larger units are two to the power 10 units. Two to the power 10 is 1024. So a kilobyte is actually 1024 bytes and not a thousand. Now this doesn't make much a huge amount of sense when you're taught in maths and science that a kilo is a thousand. Therefore, we tend to approximate a kilobyte to a thousand bytes just for simplicity. Even a thousand bytes is not enough capacity to store most files. Therefore, we have a need for higher units of measurement. Here are the units of measurements you need to know for the GCSE exams. You will notice that the binary values of these units calculated by powers of 1024. Therefore, a megabyte is 1024 multiplied by 1024 bytes. Or expressed another way, 1024 to the power 2, which is 1,048,576 bytes. Now, up until now, we've actually been using the terms kilobyte, megabyte and gigabyte inaccurately. Now, this was on purpose because many textbooks and indeed the industry and in casual conversation, the terms are being used incorrectly in everyday use. When describing quantities of bytes, we can use both a binary prefix representing powers of two and a decimal prefix representing powers of 10. Historically, the terms kilobyte, megabyte, etc. have been used to represent computing data capacities of powers of two. But the International Systems of Units also uses the words kilo and mega and so forth to refer to values to the power of 10. So when referring to the powers of two, the actual correct terms we should be using are kibi, mebi and so forth as shown in the table on the left and these are the terms that are mentioned in your specification. So while a megabyte is often estimated as a million bytes, a mebibyte is exactly 
48,576 bytes. This is to avoid the ambiguity with the size of megabytes. So now we understand that subtle difference, here's the actual table you need to be aware of for your exam, along with the correct names and spellings and the shorthand notation. So for example, a mebibyte should be represented as capital M, small i, capital B. Now obviously you're not going to need to remember the exact equivalent deanery values in the right hand column, that would be ridiculous, but just remember that when thinking about computer science, although people might say a kilobyte, what they actually mean in computer science terms is a kibibyte. You obviously also need to understand, as you'll be aware now, that as we go up and down through the different units of data storage, that the volume of bytes is multiplied or divided. So if we start with, say, a tebibyte and we move down to a gibibyte, we are timesing by roughly a thousand. Obviously, exactly, it's 1024. Again, from a mebibyte to a kibibyte, we're multiplying by 1024. When going the other way, we're dividing. So if we have mebibytes, to work out the number of kibibytes, we divide by roughly a thousand, or exactly a thousand and twenty-four. Obviously, when we get down to the byte and bit level, then bear in mind that we're multiplying by eight or dividing by eight, depending on whether we're converting from bytes to bits or from bits to bytes. And that's because there are eight bits exactly in a byte. OK, so let's look at some real examples. Here we can see a list of files in a typical file storage system. We've hidden the file name so we can focus on what's important. Now, just a quick note here to confuse the matter even further. If you look at the size of the file in Windows, you will see symbols such as KB and MB. Now, this is because Windows is using a completely different standard for Unix prefixes. With the Windows system, a KB or a kilobyte is 1024 bytes. Now, this isn't the official international system of units for data storage, which we mentioned in the previous section. And of course, we should be using in our exam KIB, kibibytes, 1024. So here we have a Microsoft Word document which is 1,470 kibibytes. Remember, to get this into mebibytes, we divide roughly by 1,000. So you can also say that this Word document is 1.47 mebibytes in size. Again, here we have a PowerPoint presentation. It's 740 kibibytes. Dividing by approximately 1,000, gives us 0.74 mebibytes in size. Let's take this Microsoft Excel worksheet now, 25 kibibytes in size, and let's work it out actually in individual bits. Well, to get from kibibits to bytes, we times approximately by 1,000, so we've got 25,000 bytes, and then of course we times by eight, because there's eight bits in a single byte. 